And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are going to be visiting the Orient. We are going to be making a hoisin glazed pork tenderloin. We're going to be making a stir-fried bok choy, and we're going to be making a tangy kind of a coleslaw mixture to go along with it. Whenever I have something hot and spicy, I like to have that cold salad to kind of cool the mouth, and that's what the coleslaw is going to do. The first thing we need to do, though, is get our pork marinating. Now, I have bought just a plain uh, the pork tenderloin that you can get in any grocery store out there, the little pork tenderloin. You, by all means, could use the pork chops. You could use the whole big pork loin if you wanted to. I'm just choosing the pork tenderloin today. We're going to get our marinade starting. I have got half a cup of hoisin sauce, which is kind of a, um, I guess you would call that sort of a Chinese barbecue type sauce. It's delicious, and I love it. And then we're going to add to that a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. Now, this is one of those times you really need the real thing. Um, a little bit goes a long way. Your, your pancake syrup would not be the same thing. You need the maple syrup. We've got about two tablespoons or so of the seasoned rice vinegar that I use all the time. Then I've got two tablespoons of the garlic sauce with the chili um, sometimes it's called sambal olique. You can get it in the grocery store anywhere in the section where they sell the international foods. It's right there with the Chinese ingredient. It's called chili garlic paste, sambal olique, anything like that. And it just is, it's just, you know, dried chilies that they've ground up. They've added garlic and spices to it. And it just adds a flavor that you really can't get anywhere else. And we're going to add to that something that, that I love, and that's fresh ginger. We're going to add about the equivalent of a teaspoon or so of the fresh ginger. You need to peel it. Just break off what you need in the grocery store. It comes just like this. You've seen me use it before. Um, it, you know, this piece of ginger probably costs about 35 cents, so it's not expensive. Just break off whatever you think you're going to need for the moment. If you don't use it all, you can store it in the freezer and it freezes beautifully, and that way it's ready for you when you're ready. And let's see, let's just go ahead and zest it here with my microplane. I always get my microplane backwards. We're going to zest it with our microplane, and I want about, I don't know, about an inch long, inch and a half long section of the fresh ginger. You cannot substitute dried ginger in this recipe for the fresh ginger. They are two completely different flavors. The dried ginger that you get in your spice section is wonderful in cookies and things like that. But for this kind of recipe, if you look on the back of the microplane, that's where all of it's going. For this recipe, you really do need the fresh ginger root. And you can find it everywhere. I, I have no problem finding the fresh ginger, and it just went on my cutting board. I didn't have my thing over my bowl, did I? That's okay. We can get it up with our knife and put it in there. But the fresh ginger adds a little bit of heat, um, a little bit of spice. It's just, it's yummy. And it's, it's a flavor that, you know, you cannot get anywhere else but the fresh, the fresh, um, root. It's actually root. And so we're going to have the juice of one lemon. And you know what? I forgot to zest it. So you need the zest. So we're going to zest this half a lemon because I forgot to zest my whole lemon and you can't zest it. I don't think you probably could. But you want the zest of the lemon too. This is a marinade that we're going to let our pork set for say 15 minutes or so before we roast it. Now, I'm roasting mine in the oven today, but by all means, if you can get to an outside grill, you would want to, um, this would be delicious on an outside grill. Maybe split the pork tenderloin if it's kind of a heavier, fatter pork 
and then put it on a grill, it would be absolutely delicious. But today I'm not grilling, so we're just gonna put it in a 400 degree oven and just kind of let it, let it roast in the oven and it'll be just as good. So let's get the juice of that other half of that lemon. This marinade you could use on so many different things. This would be delicious on a steak. If you had a steak, you could do that. Um, chicken, it would be really good. This is a versatile uh, marinade that you could, you could really use with anything. So we're gonna put that in our bowl. We've stirred that up. We're gonna put that in our bowl. Let's get this out of the way. Add a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Now the chili paste, the sambolo leek, some people call it that, has a lot of heat in it, but it's a red pepper type heat, and this is a black pepper, and it adds two different levels of flavor to your food. So you do want to add the black pepper also. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt because we're not using soy sauce. All I'm using is um, regular salt. And then I've got my pork tenderloin. Remember, this is just a, a tenderloin that you buy in any grocery store. If you have this little tough membrane, remember, that's called your silver skin, and that really is not edible. So you want to trim off that silver skin if, you, if your pork has that on there. It, it's just tough, and it really is no good. So we're just going to take our pork. We're going to put it down in our marinade. And we're just going to kind of let that hang out for about 15 minutes or so. And then we're going to put it in a 400 degree oven. Go ahead and preheat your oven. Or like I said, if you're, if you're going to cook this outside on the grill, go ahead and get your grill you know, good and hot. It would be delicious grilled outside. But we're not going to do that today. So we're just going to kind of let that hang out. I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we're going to make the coleslaw so that can be marinating. And then we're going to make a delicious side dish that I bet many of you have never had before. I'll be right back in just a few minutes. going to, we've got our pork marinating, we made a marinade, and we're just going to let that hang out for just a few more minutes, but in, in, while that's marinating, we're going to make, which is probably my favorite coleslaw recipe, I'm not a big fan of mayonnaise, I will eat it in, in a coleslaw type thing, but I really love this recipe, it's very tangy, and it's very sharp in its flavor, but alongside a grilled meat or a roasted meat, it's absolutely delicious. What we've got, we've got one cup of sugar. Now let me, well, let me back up just a little bit. In my bowl, I have just one bag of the pre-shredded up coleslaw mixture that you can buy in the produce section of any grocery store out there. You could make your own, shred your own coleslaw, you know, your cabbage and your carrots if you wanted to, and your purple, this has carrots and purple cabbage and, and regular cabbage in it. I find it easier just to simply buy the bag. I like it, so we're just gonna use the bag of the pre-shredded up coleslaw mixture. I have one cup of sugar, just regular sugar, one cup of white vinegar, the white vinegar. You could substitute the uh, rice vinegar if you wanted to. I'm gonna kind of stir that up a little bit and with a whisk until the sugar dissolves. And it just White vinegar has a sharp flavor to it, and it has a harsher flavor on its own, but when you add the sugar to it, it just mellows it out, and it just, oh, I love it. This is my favorite coleslaw. I just make this, and I would eat this whole bowl by myself in one sitting. I just absolutely love it. And then we're gonna take one egg. Now this is one of those ingredients that if you have a sensitivity 
maybe your immune system is down, um, you know, for whatever reason, you could leave the egg out. What the egg does is it, add, it acts as an emulsifier. It thickens the dressing and it just makes the, the dressing more creamy. But by all means, I have made it with and I have made it without. If you are uncomfortable eating a raw egg, you just leave the egg out. That would be perfectly fine. You, it's really not a problem. It's just that it adds that thickness to the dressing that you, you tr just truly can't get without it. And we're just going to stir that in there. And then pour this over top of your dress, of your coleslaw mixture. And then, let me get a towel here. Then you want to just kind of stir that up. Let me grab a spoon. You just want to stir that. Mix that all together with a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon to a tablespoon, however salty you like your, your food. Let's move it up here. This will wilt down quite a bit, of course, because the, the cabbage will give out its liquid because of the vinegar and the sugar, and some fresh ground pepper and I love it takes it about really the longer you let this sit the better if you can make this particular part earlier in the day and let it sit for a couple of hours it's even better but you know as little as 30 minutes truly is makes it delicious and it's really good the next day it keeps you know, a couple of days in the refrigerator. This is one of those dishes that's perfect for summertime because it does not contain mayonnaise, and therefore you don't have to worry about spoilage. And then just kind of let that hang out for a little bit, and then we'll taste and adjust our seasonings. We might need a little more salt or a little more pepper. I like a lot of pepper. So we'll just kind of put this right here, and we'll just sort of let that hang out a little bit. Now, Let's get back to our pork. Our oven is preheated to 400 degrees, and we've just let our pork sit in this delicious marinade, and we're going to take it out, let it drain just a little bit, and we're going to put it in a pan, just a shallow roasting pan. We're going to put that in a 400 degree oven, but now I want to, I want to show you something here. This marinade that is left over, if you if you boil it for two minutes, at least two minutes, or you know, get it on the stove and let it be simmering for a couple of minutes, it will kill any of the, the cross contaminants that were in it. This makes a delicious sauce for your pork when we get it cooked and we slice it and you want to put this over it. So we're going to put this in our saucepan and we are just going to turn it on simmer. And we're just going to kind of let that be doing its thing while we roast the pork tenderloin. And I know you're, some of you are sitting there saying, oh, but that had raw meat in it. Yes, it did. But by boiling it on the stove, it will kill any of the bacteria, um, you know, the, 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 whatever it is in the pork or any raw meat, the bacteria in there that would make you sick. By boiling it, you're going to kill that, and it's safe to consume. You can do that with any marinade that you use as long as you you know, like I said, as long as you boil it for two to three minutes, it's perfectly safe to eat. So let's get this one in the oven. And then we're going to start on a dish that I bet many of you have never seen before. You know, and as I, as I, as I prepare the recipes for this program, I really try to do things that most people have never, ever cooked or never done. I'm an adventurous eater. I'm an adventurous cook. I love to try new things. In your grocery stores, every grocery store out there, this is not an exotic ingredient. I bet that you have seen this over with the leaf lettuces or maybe it's with the, um, the kale and the collard greens and that kind of, you know, that section of your produce department. This is called bok choy. B-O-K-C-H-O-Y is how you spell it. And it's a Chinese, we think of it as a Chinese vegetable. It's kind of a cross between, you know, a green, like your collard greens, 
And then it has these stalks in there, uh, kind of reminds you a little bit of overgrown celery. But these are, this is all completely edible. And many times in Chinese restaurants, you will find this in the rice or in the uh, stir-fried vegetables, you know, that they will do and they, that they put a lot of times on the all-you-can-eat buffet bars. They will have the bok choy mixed in with the vegetables. Most of the time you will have seen the white part. It is absolutely delicious and it's easy to cook. I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to show you what you can do with this wonderful bok choy. I'll be right back. chapter 8 verse 18 says the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed to us you know we as humans tend to focus on the here and now on the immediate we don't see the whole picture where God sees the entire picture he sees the whole puzzle we see one piece at a time you know many times we have things that come our way that cause us just to focus on the here and now. And we need to remember that there's a bigger picture at work, that God is painting a beautiful portrait for your life. Don't only look at the one brushstroke. Look at the masterpiece that He's creating in your life. Trust in Him and know that He is working the whole puzzle. Now we are going to fix our bok choy. Our pork is in the oven and it's roasting and we made a marinade of that with the hoisin sauce, the maple syrup, the chili sauce with the garlic, the um, uh, salt and the pepper and the rice vinegar and the lemon zest and the ginger and it's the juice of the lemon and it's going to be delicious and it's just roasting away. We've got our coleslaw mixture marinating that we mixed, a cup of sugar and a cup of white vinegar and one egg, although like I said, if you wanted to leave the egg out, you could. It just makes the dressing thicker and more emulsifying. Um, and now we're gonna start on our bok choy. Now I've got a large skillet, preheating to medium, medium high heat, and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or so of olive oil, just enough to kinda Give it a place to go in here. We're going to cut up our bok choy. You want to trim off the bottom of it, and that's, you know, not, not edible. And you want to make sure that you separate it out and trim off any pieces that might, you know, not look as, as good as it should. And we're going to need to rinse it again. Once you get it trimmed up, it's kind of like celery. It grows in a soil, and you see when you open it up how, how you will get some dirt down in there. So when you cut it open, you will want to take it back to your sink and make sure that you rinse it thoroughly. Now our bok choy is clean. We want to take a knife and just cut it into bite-sized pieces, leaves and all. The stems and the leaves are all edible. and it will wilt down. You know how you can get, you know how when you cook greens and it seems like you have a pile of greens and then you get them in the skillet and, and they're just, they wilt down to next to nothing. It's the same thing with this. So we wanna put, I'm gonna put the stems in there first because they are a little bit hardier, a little bit thicker. And they will take just a little bit longer to cook my marinade is simmering away, so I'm going to turn that down. That's popped right out of there, didn't it? Let's get our other part of our stems cut up here and get those in there. The baby center ones are, you know, they're okay to kind of wait on. This will wilt down. And we're going to add lots of seasonings to this as it wilts. Chinese vegetables a lot of times will look exotic and, and kind of intimidating to where you just don't know what to do with them. 
But if you know, if you just get in there and experiment, there's, you know, I, I was at the grocery store yesterday and I was just looking. I love to just go when I have time and just look and see what's different, what's new. And I get ideas that way. I get, I have a lot of people ask me, so where in the world do you come up with your ideas? Truthfully, a lot of it comes from walking through the grocery store. I will see something and I don't, you know, I've never, maybe never tasted it before, especially vegetables and things like that. I love to try new things. But you never know if you like something until you try it and until you experiment with the cooking process. So this is just going to saute. It's going to take it just a couple of minutes, and then we will add our greens because they just really take, take just a, a few minutes. My marinade is boiling away, so let's turn it down. This is what we had on our pork. Remember the beautiful pork? that we've got in the oven. This is the marinade, and you see I've brought it to a simmer, and I'm gonna let that simmer for just a couple of minutes because what that will do is kill any of the, the you know, the, the bacteria, or whatever it is in the, I don't know the proper term for it, but you know what I'm talking about, that's in the raw meat. And so by boiling it, it makes it safe to eat. have been sauteing for just a couple of minutes here and we're going to add some other ingredients and then we're going to put the tops. The taste of this kind of is a little bit reminiscent of collard greens, sort of. If you like collard greens, this is a dish that you would love and I happen to love collard greens. This is just the pre-chopped up garlic that you can buy in any store out there. We're going to add about, oh, a teaspoon of that and that's probably about a clove. I'm going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, just because you just got to have that heat. I like hot food. We're going to add a splash, which, you know, probably about, I'd say, two tablespoons of soy sauce. You do not need to add any salt because the soy sauce is so salty. We're going to add some fresh cracked pepper. to our bok choy. I do want to encourage you to try new vegetables. Try some of these new things. I mean, if you don't, you know, if it's, it's, I love them, and if it's something that you don't like, it's only food, you know, and it's so important that you try new vegetables and that you get your family to try new things. I'm constantly with the boys trying to get them to try new things. They're, they're very picky little eaters, but we do try to, to get them to eat uh, different things, and I, I'm such a big vegetable eater. My pan is full here, so let's see what we got. Oops, get him in there. Now, I've got a big lid. My skillet actually doesn't have a lid, so I just borrowed one from another pan. You do that at home too, don't you? And we're just going to kind of let that wilt. So let's get that, and just we're just going to let that hang out for just a minute here. Let me clear off my cutting board and I'm going to show you the pork. Now we've got our pork is done, and this is what it looks like, completely finished. It's delicious. Let's get us a pretty little plate out here, and we will go ahead and slice our pork, and it's just delicious. You see how it just, if you cut across the grain, It's yummy. I love pork tenderloin. It's healthy. It's very, very lean, very nutritious. You know, they call it the other white meat. It's a whole lot leaner than your beef. And the tenderloin, when you buy the tenderloin, usually two come to a package, so you get two of these. And, you know, it, it's, it's economical because you, there's no waste other than just trimming off that little tiny piece of silver skin if it's there. 
and it's, you know, it's very lean, and it can be, you can cook it in so many different ways. And that's one of the things that I love about pork. Now let's put us just a couple of pieces on our serving dish here. And we're going to spoon over some of our gravy here in just a second. But there's our pork. Let's try it and see. Mm, it's yummy. Let's check our bok choy. It only takes just a second for those greens to wilt down. Turn my heat up just a little bit. You see how that big pile just kind of wilts down to really next to nothing. It, it just wilts, just like spinach. You get a big pile of spinach, and when you wilt it down, it just it ends up being next to nothing. So that needs just a minute more. Let's spoon some of our wonderful sauce. Now, this is the marinade that we had over the pork tenderloin that we've boiled so that it is safe to consume because we want to let the marinade, you know, you want to let your pork marinade, oh, about 15 to 20 minutes or so. And then we've got our wonderful coleslaw here that we made. It's really more of a salad. I guess a coleslaw is more of a mayonnaise type thing. I, I think of anything made with cabbage as a coleslaw, but this is really more of a salad. And like I said, the longer you let this set, the better it is. And we're just going to dish up a little serving of our beautiful cabbage. We'll call this a cabbage salad. I call it coleslaw, but it really is more of a cabbage salad. And we'll get that out of the way. Let's put some fresh cracked pepper on top of that, because that's how I like it, since I'm cooking. <laughs> we're going to do it the way I like it. And let's get some of our beautiful bok choy. One second here, let me get my tongs. See how this is. Frying it. Let's get some of that out on our plate. And here we go. What a wonderful, different side dish for your family. This is bok choy with a hoisin glazed pork tenderloin and a cabbage salad. I hope that you'll try these recipes and let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna. for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.